Fabletics partnered with Khloe Kardashian and I bought the whole collection so we could try it. It has been a while since I have tried Fabletics, but this is not their first celebrity collab. They've collaborated with Kevin Hart, Vanessa Hudgens, Maddie Ziegler, Demi Lovato, and so many more celebrities, which I never tried the previous celebrity collabs, mostly because I do try to avoid Fabletics. They're just really not my favorite for a couple reasons. But anyways, I'm surprised to see a Kardashian partnering with something kind of outside of their own Kardashian brands. Like you would assume that Khloe Kardashian would partner with Skims or something, which is Kim's brand, because they've made activewear before, which I do have a video on. And Khloe actually has her own brand, which is Good American. You'd think they would just make activewear. So it caught me a little off guard to see them taking a whole different route and just partnering with Fabletics instead of making their own. But honestly, it was probably just easier because Fabletics knows how to churn out a lot of activewear. So like I said, I've never been a huge fan of Fabletics, but they are affordable for what they are. So if you've never purchased from Fabletics, you basically have to sign up for their VIP membership in order to make an order. And how that VIP membership works is basically you are tied into a membership where they charge you $30 at the beginning of the month for you to use on any of their activewear. You can skip it. You have to skip it within the first five days of the month, but you can skip it whenever you want, which the people who defend Fabletics say like, oh, you can skip it. So you don't really have to pay a membership fee. But I just think it's sketchy to make people sign up for a membership, hoping they're going to forget to skip the membership fee in the beginning of the month. Just sell activewear without requiring a membership. I'm just against making people sign up for a membership just to get essentially fake discounts. Their prices are so inflated when you don't have a membership. Everything that I bought today, if I did not have a Fabletics membership, it would have been $720. $29, but I paid less than $200 for all of this. So I saved over $500 by having the Fabletics membership. And I'm just going to say this now. I feel like someday this is going to turn into a lawsuit because if you guys didn't know, there are some companies like JCPenney that there's a class action lawsuit right now against having fake discounts with false reference pricing, which I feel like is kind of what Fabletics is doing. They're saying a pair of leggings is $80, but as soon as you get on their website and actually have their membership, it's immediately like $15. So it's just like a discount you can get all the time. Anyway, Fabletics rant over. This is like my fifth time signing up for a Fabletics membership that I will cancel after I return what I don't like. So this is the Fabletics Chloe edit and this is the first round. I had meant to film this video a while before but life got kind of busy so we've been sitting on this for a little while and they did already drop a Chloe edit drop two that is still kind of similar vibes. It's honestly very like deserty colors. We have a variety of leggings from like traditional like performance leggings to some seamless. We have some bodysuits. We have this interesting like windbreaker jackets, kind of color block, kind of fun. I think a lot of this stuff is probably sold out at this point because it's been a couple weeks since I bought it. I did pay for express shipping, which was meant to be two days, but it took like a whole week. So I also blame that for my delay on filming this. Anyways, Chloe aside, it's been a while since I've tried Fabletics activewear. So let's see if they've made any improvements since I've tried them years ago. All right, let's start out with this first little orange set. So this is the principal low impact bra. And when I put prices on the screen, I'm going to pay the price that I pay which is not like any fancy discount. Again, it's just what the Fabletics membership ended up charging me at the end. So I got everything in a size small, which is what I've worn in Fabletics in the past. It is a polyester spandex, but I was expecting it to be more performance, like the leggings that have a sleek performance feel, but this one is almost like a Lululemon Luan feel. So like an unbrushed active fabric that's not sleek slippery. This one is a low impact option. They do have a high impact that we'll try as well, but we have just a classic sports brush shape. We have a little scoop neckline. We have an elastic that's sewn into the inside, so it is there, but it's not visible from the outside, so a nice seamless look. We have a, a double strap detail that goes into this little kind of layered detail in the back, and we do have removable cut pads with the seams that keep them where they're supposed to be, so let's try it on. All right, here's the sports bra. So I like the seamlessness of this one, that it just flows right into the elastic at the bottom, but it's not sewn on the outside, so just a very seamless, minimal look. Scoop neckline. I would say the coverage overall is about a medium coverage. I feel like I have a tiny, tiny bit of side boob, nothing crazy, but definitely a little bit of cleavage with this scoop neck. So in terms of large cup size friendly, it's kind of large cup size friendly, but there's definitely, but there's definitely some potential for spillage at the top. So it's not something I would completely stay away from, but definitely not going to be as good of coverage and support as our next option. I just really am not a big fan of this material. Honestly, the only time I see materials like this is in cheaper leggings when they either don't want to get a performance material material, which is that like sleek material like the leggings. And they also don't want to go the extra step and brush the fabric and make it nice and smooth. It's just not very soft. It's also usually not very sweat friendly and just like not my top choice in fabric. For me, it's going to be either performance or brush. You got to pick one. Support. 
not a light to medium support, definitely wouldn't be a high impact day for me. And then we have that strappy detail in the back. Definitely not a bad bra. I would have chosen a different fabric option, but I'm still feeling pretty supported for a lower coverage option. And I do like the back detail. All right, to go with that bra, we have the Motion 365 high-waisted bungee leggings. I got these in a size small. And the final price for these came out to $14. So these are a performance material. Here is an up close of the fabric. It is a sleek performance. It's not brushed, sweat wicking, high impact workout friendly. I guess Fabletics has not yet let go of the front seam. And honestly, I just expect so many brands to not have a front seam at this point that I forget that we still do this. So this is gonna be interesting. I'm someone who definitely suffers from camel when there's a front seam involved, but some leggings are worse than others. So these leggings do have a small stitch at the top. It doesn't feel like an elastic, so it should cut in minimally. There is this little bungee drawstring that goes all the way around the waistband, and these can be really helpful in keeping leggings up if you are a runner or someone who just suffers from leggings sliding down. And I think it's actually a cute detail to be able to see it on the outside of the leggings. I don't think I've seen a lot of that. Again, we do have a front seam, which I'm not super excited about. We have a long extended gusset that goes almost all the way down the leg. They did have different inseam options. So I did get the tall inseam, which I will post on the screen at the end, what it measures to be. Then we also have side pockets. And then at the back, we just have one seam kind of straight across. Again, I just feel like Fabletics is kind of living in the past with activewear. And usually I see just a little more flattering detail in the back. I'm not talking a scrunch or anything crazy, but a seam that maybe just like contours the glutes a little bit better, but we'll see how this goes. All right, so here are the leggings. And I think out of both of the leggings today, this is going to be my favorite. That being said, there are a lot of things I have mixed feelings about. So first of all, I believe this is my first time trying their performance fabric. And I do like it. I think it's a nice fabric. It definitely feels to me like it's going to hold up well. It has a solid medium to medium high compression. And it's a little bit shiny, but it still feels like a nice performance material. So I'm definitely happy with the fabric. It does have a front seam, but I feel like the invasiveness is not too bad because it has such a long front rise. It's not like super short. And I'm trying to pull it up where it needs to be and it's causing a lot of strain. So I'd say minimal camel, at least for me. It's hitting me right at about a high rise. It is a little bit above the belly button. It does have that little stitching along the top, but it's actually not cutting into me like a top elastic would do. I feel like these would stay up pretty well, but we also have that little bungee cord to keep it up a little bit better. So I do think this is a nice addition. Some things I think I would change. The waistband area is like an inch tall. So this isn't going to give any sort of tummy control, compression, and it also just makes it look a little bit off in the back. On this channel, I talk a lot about glute seam placement, and I do like it when the seams are above the glutes, but this is almost so high that it looks a little bit strange. I generally prefer a slightly thicker waistband that goes right above the hips there and then can give a little tummy control as well. Some people also find that a front seam helps with the tummy area compared to a no front seam item. So there's also that, but I generally just prefer a little bit of a longer waistband. Also, when you do tighten the little bungee drawstring, it just kind of kind of sits there, which is a little bit out of place. I guess we could tuck it in, but I do think that little bungee detail is kind of fun. It's a little bit, it's a little bit outdoorsy in a way. We have some spacious side pockets here. I hate when we have these horizontal seams down the leg because whenever you get them on, because I just feel like they tug in awkward places and why have a seam in the back of the thigh there that's just gonna cut into your legs? Like I generally don't think about leggings being thick thigh friendly because that's really more something for shorts that have that seam in the middle of your legs, but these are definitely cutting into me a little bit. So I was wondering what kind of felt uncomfortable in the back and the seam is definitely gonna dig into my thighs. So be careful of that if you tend to carry a little more weight in your thighs. And taking a look at the full length view, this is the tall inseam and they go just about to my ankle. So I'd say that they are a full length legging for me. And yeah, I don't try a lot of performance leggings. They're not my go-to since I'm not a runner and I just don't reach for them all that much. But I'd say with the exception of the waistband and the seam in the back, I like, I'm liking everything else. All right, and the high impact option to go with those leggings, we have the bungee high impact bra. I got this in a size small and paid $16. $19.99. So I love that they have multiple coverage and support options. This one does feel like it's made more out of that same material as the leggings. So this one is made of a nylon elastane. So it's the same color as the leggings, but it's not quite the same material. The material doesn't feel as soft and it just does feel a little bit cheaper than the leggings. Usually I'm all for nylon spandex, but this one just feels a little bit thin and 
kind of wrinkly but here's the up close detail of this one it's hard to tell but in person i definitely feel a difference in the fabric and then we also have these little mesh panel details and then they also incorporate that little bungee detail in the back that the leggings had which i think is a super cute little add-on so that's just in the back we do have a racer back we do have removable cups as well and a pretty thick elastic that goes all the way down the sports bra so this is all one piece of elastic so let's try this on all right here is the high impact bra so this one fits me really well i would say it's true to size but with this thick elastic at the bottom it's fitting me perfectly but if you are in between sizes i definitely would go with the size up because this is not going to be the most forgiving this is super full coverage we have a high neckline it does go into the armpits a little bit as well not in a way that's uncomfortable or anything but just a full full coverage i don't really understand why this would be a different material than the leggings i do prefer the legging material than the top but the color match is really good support is about like a medium high to high support i'm not personally having any jiggling going on so it's keeping the girls nice and in place and then we have the back i love how the bungee detail kind of ties into the leggings even though it's not functional on the bra just adds a little bit of detail again with the material they chose for the bra it's not quite as smooth as the leggings so there is a chance that it might chafe a little bit in the armpits that's really the only thing i would look out for otherwise i think it's a nice bra good coverage and i like that they're having like a smaller cup size and larger cup size option with the sport for us to pair with the leggings. Okay, I think we should try the onesie next because these are definitely a big thing right now. So this is the Motion 365 open back seven inch onesie. So I got a size small and this is only $24. Fabletics pricing is so crazy because you literally go on the website and I think this is listed at like $80 to $90, something about that just seems big. All right, so this is the Motion 365. So it's made of that same sleek performance material as the leggings, which I definitely prefer this instead of the sports bra material. I'm a little bummed to see that there is no built-in bra underneath this, because if I'm throwing on a one piece, I would like it to just be a one and done and not have to wear anything underneath it. So having to find a sports bra that is not going to interfere with this back design just feels like a forgotten part of the design of the onesie, because not the entire population of people who wear this are going to be able to go braless or feel comfortable going braless, especially in a workout item. So if you're going to have a fitness onesie, fitness dress, things like that, there better be some sort of built-in bra. We do have that mesh detail. I like the little bit of color blocking here. I also think this is going to be a very slimming effect as well, having those two different colors. We have some seam detail in the front here, and this one actually is no front seam, which is amazing because as a long torso girl with a workout onesie, I have to have no front seam or else the camel is literally painful. So they say this is a seven inch inseam which is a great inseam for me I love that and then we have that open back detail and the side mesh so it's a larger mesh lined with a fine mesh so it's still going to be breathable but I think you'll have some coverage if you'll be wearing underwear under this which most people I feel like would to not just see the underwear straight through so here is the outside of the mesh and it is a finer mesh on the inside so definitely a little more light shows through the side panels than the front and the back but not so much that I feel like it's something to be concerned about and i don't know something about this onesie it's not quite as flattering as i wanted it to be so first of all we have some little seam detail we have the mesh side panels they definitely feel a little bit more breathable and i am wearing nude underwear underneath it and it's nowhere to be seen so you can definitely still wear underwear under these and not have it be visible i do like the inseam of the shorts it's a seven inch inseam but it is definitely a little bit tight on the thighs it is a compressive performance material so sometimes that is expected but just keep that in mind and I just feel like I am not looking too good from the back. So first of all, I've tried many a fitness onesie in my day and I rarely have this gaping going on in the back. So not loving that. Also, this fabric is just giving me a major pancake butt. That in combination with it not contouring to my lower back is just flattening the glutes. And I didn't ask my activewear to make my butt look worse. It should just make it look better. Again, I don't want to scrunch on all of my activewear, but we're definitely getting low booty scale. I don't always rate onesies in the booty scale but if I did these would be a low anyways we have that open back which I think is really nice the breathable mesh up here but we don't have a bra on the top which just kind of ruins it for me if you're okay going braless this does like hold me in just with compression alone in this area but there's no thickness to prevent any nippage going on if it's cold outside and i'm just not getting that lift and support i also always notice more under boob sweat when there's not an inner bra in there to kind of soak it up so under boob is like my number one sweat area so this area would just really be highlighted if i were to do any sort of activity that involves sweating in this so yeah this onesie 
just not really doing it for me. In terms of sizing, I do wear the same size on the top and bottom, so that makes it easier for me. But if I had to pick a size, I'd go with whichever size is larger, just to accommodate the bottom area, just because I'm getting a little bit of thigh squishing. In terms of coverage on the top, I would say this is a solid medium coverage, really good side boob coverage. We have a little bit of scooping, maybe even medium to full coverage, because I don't see myself falling out of this in any way. All right, another pair of leggings. We're going to try these seamless high-waisted compressive leggings. It's been a while since I have tried a classic seamless legging. Honestly, this whole launch feels like a blast from the past. I've been reviewing activewear a long time on this channel, probably like six years at this point, maybe. And this does not feel like activewear that was designed in 2023. Is this not something Gymshark launched in like 2018? I'll have to go back to my Gymshark reviews, but the thick waistband, the unibuts going on in the back, the Power Ranger dystopian detail that's going on down the side it just does not scream 2023 to me. Also to label this as a compressive legging, when I think of a compressive legging, I think, okay, this is gonna be performance, high impact. And this feels like a stretchy knit material that I would expect out of a lounge legging. All right, here's the up close. We have this thick knit detail. These are heavy leggings, like these have some weight to them. So it's gonna be fun trying these on today because it's a little hot still where I am. All right, so again, I got a size small tall and these were $9.59. That's just crazy. So these are a nylon polyester elastane, which is kind of typical for a seamless to have like a three fabric blend. The inside is yellow to kind of have that little outer seam details in the yellow. So when you stretch the blue, you will be seeing some yellow through. So just keep that in mind. We do have what I call a pseudo seam going up the front as well as the back, which is another very typical Gymshark thing to put in. All right, these leggings are just gonna be a big fat no for me. And I just have to say it, Fabletics is cheap. I have never picked up a Fabletics item and been like, wow, this is a luxurious fabric. It all feels very cheap to me. The construction is just not there. It's gaping in weird places that I just don't have an issue with, even with other affordable brands. Brands. You go and you find some colorful koala, some CRZ yoga, some camo fitness, other affordable brands you can get easily through Amazon or their website. They still have nice fabrics and can remain affordable. And these Fabletics pieces are just not it. So safe to say, I will not be giving Fabletics another chance for a while because they have really not improved since I've tried them before. Actually, that's a lie. I feel like they were definitely worse before, but they are not where they should be for being around as long as they have been. Anyways, let's get into the leggings. So first of all, what do we have here? an itchy seamless. I will not wear an itchy seamless. You sit down with these for more than five minutes and you will be trying to rip them off your body because it just feels so itchy in your thighs and your butt. It's just not a seamless that I like to go for. We do have a high rise. They call these a compressive seamless legging. These are super stretchy and I'm not really feeling any compression at all. Really not getting any hold anywhere. These are like a medium compression at the very, very most. And I just truly can't get over this style going on. It's just not for me. And again, it just feels very Gymshark. Everything in the legging is nice and snug and we get to the waistband and I just have some extra fabric and a little bit of gaping going on. It's hard to see with the tags, I'm sorry, but I'm returning these because I don't like them. So we're not taking the tags off. But again, just like ill-fitting. The one thing I will say is these will be cellulite friendly because they have all that ribbing and detailing going on. Will hide any sort of leg texture down there. And then in terms of the booty scale, honestly, it could be worse. These are definitely stretchy, so you can pull them up the glutes. But that honestly makes a little like weird fabric situation going on here almost worse. So we're just gonna like do a medium on the booty scale called day. I don't think these are especially flattering. And I can't wait to get these off me because they are already starting to itch. Quick little full length view. These are super stretchy and I ordered a long length. So these should be very tall girl friendly as well. And to go with the seamless leggings, we have the seamless low impact open back bra. So made of that same seamless fabric, that kind of stretchy knit material that feels a little bit thick. We have some more of that contrast piping colored detailing. This one has a round cutout in the back and this one does not have any cup pads which is a little bit upsetting because I do like my sports bras to have that cup pad in there. It just provides a little more structure, a little more shape and some nippage coverage for when it gets cold. This one just has this little like gathered stitch detailing going on on the inside of the bra which is then not visible on the outside so that just seems a little bit a little bit out of place. So first of all there are no cup pads or anything and what are we doing making bras without any sort of padding or at least an option? Like if you don't like the removable padding, why don't we throw in some like molded cup padding? 
or something like that. It just gives me a very like flattened appearance and just not a lot of structure without any sort of padding. I also feel like very squished down at the bottom, but also a lot of side boob going on that just feels unflattering. Then I feel some excess fabric kind of wrinkling up in the neck area. So this one just is not very well fitting. I don't think the shape is quite right. There's a way to do like a narrow neckline without looking kind of frumpy and that's just how I'm feeling with this one. So we have a little bit more compression around the bottom band here in terms of coverage I'm gonna go with medium to full coverage it would be full if we didn't have the side boob going on the support is really only like a light to medium support I'm just not feeling super held in then we have the open back detail which is really nice breathable this style is just very outdated to me and not in like a oh, we're bringing back 90s kind of way but like 2017 Gymshark kind of way for me if I'm going to do seamless I want it to be stretchy soft comfortable and very like body contouring and this just is kind of like stiff in all the wrong places then we have another jumpsuit so I guess the Kardashians are into their jumpsuits. This is the Motion 365 jumpsuit. So this one is fully made of that Motion 365 material, which is that sleek performance. We have a little V-neck in the front, some seam details, this little shiny elastic that goes right along the waist, which, you know, at least it gives some waist definition, but seems a little bit aggressive. No front seam. And I don't think this one came in any tall inseams or anything. Yeah, this one does not come in short, medium, tall, which I feel like if the leggings are going to come in short, medium, tall, it would be nice for the jumpsuit to come in that as well. And then we have the back, which is super open and cut out. So we have a little strap connecting the two shoulder straps and then it dips quite low. We do have a back rise seam. It tends to be a little more flattering on the glutes when we do. And this one does have removable cut pads. So that is a step up from the other jumpsuit. But I wouldn't consider this a full internal bra because it's just the cut pads, no elastic underneath the bust to kind of keep you contained. The only elastic is the one that goes around the waist, which is going to be a little bit low compared to where the bust is. So let's try this on. All right, I thought this one was going to be a little bit better than the last one, but I'm actually feeling worse about this. So first of all, we're in the Motion 365 fabric and I've tried many fitness onesies. I've tried Buff Bunny, Camo Fitness, Pop Flex, and I don't get the same issues that I'm having in this. So the small sports bra and the small leggings were definitely fitting me, but then we get to the onesies and I get all this extra fabric. I'm like, if you got close enough to me with this gaping going on in the back, do we see that shadow? If we got close enough, you'd be seeing my underwear down there. So just not fitting how I'd want it to fit. Anyways, it is feeling pretty long torso friendly. The length is also pretty good, even though it only comes in one length. We do have cup pads in this one, but I'm actually getting less compression in the top area than the short onesie. So honestly, I feel even less supported. So in terms of coverage, I would go medium to full on the top and the bra support is honestly light. Keep in mind, no elastic underneath the bust. So you're not really getting that hold and lift. This single shiny elastic across the waist just looks cheap to me. And the whole thing is just a little bit shinier than I would like. I don't know if it's the color or what, but it's just not working for me. Anyways, we have the back, which is super open. Honestly, kind of a look back here. It would be really great if it just wasn't gaping, but I do love like an open back moment, especially on a onesie like this, where you just have the opportunity to be so open in the back. Honestly, this material is not feeling nearly as compressive as the Motion 365 leggings. I'm getting like a light compression at the very most, and this is not going to be very flattering in the lower tummy area. If you carry any sort of weight here, I'm getting zero compression in there especially because of the gaping going on so yeah I don't know what Fabletics lists the original price for this as but this just does not feel like great quality to me the fit is off the fabric is meh and I'm all for a defined waist moment but this is just this just wasn't the right choice. And lastly, we're moving on to outerwear. So this is the Cozy Fleece Cropped Hoodie. So this one is a raw edge crop at the bottom. I'd say it feels overall like a medium weight classic sweatshirt material with really no stretch to it. It is super soft on the inside. So it does have like a classic fleece lining, really soft. We have some contrasting colors with the drawstrings here, which is super cute. It looks like some room in the sleeves, which is also nice and a hoodie in the back. And I got a size small in this thinking it 
probably be a little bit, just a little bit flowy even in my regular size. All right, we have the hoodie. So I'm liking the crop length of this. I have had some hoodies in the past that are so cropped, they like barely cover your bra. And this is nice because it kind of goes right to the top of the legging waistband. The fabric inside is super soft on this one. I'm loving the fabric choice. It doesn't really have any stretch to it, but with the kind of boxy oversized shape, it really doesn't need it. So it does have a slightly relaxed shape. You can see holding my arms out. It's a little bit boxy here, which I think is cute with a cropped sweatshirt. And there's also some room in the sleeves. The sleeves hit just right at my wrist for me. So it's a good length. And I like the little dipping detail they did with the drawstrings. And then we have the hood in the back. So yeah, I honestly don't have anything bad to say about this one. Um, sometimes raw hems, you do have to be careful of a little bit of fraying, but I don't think it's really gonna be a problem with this fleece type fabric. And lastly, we have the Heights cargo jacket. So this one is giving like vintage Nike vibes. So the original price of this one was supposed to be 140 and I paid $41.99, which is kind of wild, but even with Fabletics discounts, $41 is more than I've paid for most Fabletics things, but for a jacket like this, I feel like that's really not bad. So I got a small, it's definitely a long oversized jacket. So some cool features. We do have a zipper on the back of the collar that unzips to reveal a hood, which I feel like this is my preferred way to have a hidden hood. Like I don't like hoods that like fully unzip and remove because realistically I'm never zipping that thing back on if I zip it off. So that's fun. We do have a full zip with button up details and a little bungee cord at the waist to kind of cinch in the waist a little bit. Two little front cargo pockets here. We have a hidden pocket up at the top as well. And just definitely a lot going on in this jacket. This seems very outdoorsy to me and not super Kardashian, but I appreciate them testing out a little utility jacket here. So let's try this on. All right, we have the cargo jacket. So I have it zipped up with the little waist ties in right now. So you can just kind of slide the little I don't really know what these are called, but you can just kind of slide the little things down on each side and it just cinches the jacket in. You don't actually have to like physically tie these together, but you could if you wanted to. This is definitely a very long jacket. If I undo the waist cinching, it is going all the way over my butt and definitely an oversized fit. So this is a small, which is the same size I've been getting in everything else. And this is definitely fitting like a true medium to large. So we have that full front zip as well as a little button closure. It's a very lightweight material. It definitely feels like it would be waterproof, windbreaker type material, but it doesn't have really any warmth to it. And then we have that hood in the back that can be zipped up into the collar. So I think this is a really fun piece. I think this one actually feels like the highest quality item out of them all, which makes sense. It is the most expensive. It's not really something I would reach for or really wear in my daily life. And it's also like very like outdoorsy, like sporty. And I do see Chloe as like a sporty person who like works out a lot. But I don't really get the outdoorsy vibes that I'm seeing in this collection. Like, I just didn't really see her as like an outdoorsy kind of girl, but maybe I'm wrong. I've never seen Keeping Up with the Kardashians or really any of those shows, so maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, this one's definitely fun, just not something I would really regularly wear. All right, guys, that's it for the review. And like I was saying before, it has been a minute since I've tried Fabletics, and I would say they've made improvements. The first time I tried them, none of the regular leggings even fit me remotely. I am getting a better fit now, but everything to me feels very cheap and just like not really thought through with the design and fit. And I do have high standards for active wear and this is affordable, but there's so many other affordable brands out there that just put a little more thought into what they're doing. It just feels like they're just pumping out collection after collection and just none of this was really impressive to me in design, functionality, or, or quality wise. Let me know in the comments if you've tried any of this. If you're someone who regularly shops Fabletics, is this kind of on par with their normal stuff? But I think it's safe to say that it will take another couple year break from trying Fabletics. It's now time for me to cancel my membership again. I had to do this when I tried their scrubs, when I tried Yitty, when I didn't realize that that was like a branch of Fabletics. Savage X Fenty, another branch of Fabletics. I just need the celebrities to do their own thing and not just like hop on the Fabletics train and just put in minimal effort to create a lot of product. And because we haven't had a cat appearance yet, there's Pinto right here sleeping on his little couch. He loves his couch. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.